Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am building a naturalistic setup for Diego. Now I originally filmed this process bit by bit, but I ended up with over 50 videos and over 25 minutes worth of footage and nobody needs that in their life. So I thought I would just narrate over the process. So this is what it's looking like to begin with. I'd recently made a hole in the background for the second vent, hence the ripped background. But to begin with, I of course have to empty the entire tank of substrate, hides and the paper background. And by the way, whilst everything is happening during this time, Diego is in a temporary tank, which is an 18 inch long fornarium. Now I've got all of that out of the way, I have to decide what I want to do. So basically I have a flat background which I can stick my fake rocks on, or do I make the background out of fake rocks and expanding foam? So this was taking me a while to decide. Um, by the way, I got all the fake rocks and the flat backgrounds from a website called rockways.co.uk. I know people asked me in my previous builds, but that's where I get it from. I'll leave their links below if you're interested. Um, I decided though in the end to use some of the backgrounds on the sides and use a mix of fake rocks and real rocks and expanding foam on the back. One thing I like to do when deciding how the layout is going to be is I like to position things in place, step back, take a photo, leave it for a while, see what I like. I'm incredibly indecisive so this took a long time but I took lots of photos and I sort of figured out what would work best. I also decided to use Diego's original hide over the heat mat as he loves it and it fits in with the overall look. However, I will be removing that vine. This was a second hand hide that I bought years ago and they had just shoved the vine in there. Anyway, I ended up using aquarium safe sealant to stick the background flats to the sides and I left that for a day and then went on to add expanding foam, fake rocks and real rocks to the background. After that I decided to carve down the expanding foam to reveal the rocks a little more. I don't really like the whole roundness of the expanding foam once it's dried so I needed to cut that right down and also cut the hole for the vent and any other holes where I needed to put like electrical equipment through like heat mats and thermostats. I then went on to put a little expanding foam rocks and one fake rock on the side of the tank. Once everything was settled, I popped in the highs just to see how everything would look together and I was kind of procrastinating because I really didn't want to do that bit where you put sealant on the background, but yeah. Basically for this part, you have to put all the sealant down over the black foam. I chose grey as I thought if the sand stuff falls away, it will still look a bit like stone. Well, that was my logic anyway. Um, and I used an old toothbrush to spread that sealant and then I added on this grit. Now this grit is totally safe for the background but of course I wouldn't use it for the main substrate. And at the bottom I actually used Earth Mix Arid to stick down because I didn't really want the grit mixing too much with the substrate. The sealing process can be quite long but this time it wasn't too bad. I think because the majority of the area were covered by like rocks fake rocks and real rocks. Um, you just have to leave it to cure for a while. It's quite strong smelling, so of course I wouldn't like to move Diego in straight away. So there was a lot of waiting between the sealant process and actually moving stuff in. Once that was all done, I brushed off any excess and hoovered it up. I also put the hoover directly on the background because basically if it was too weak to stay on the sealant, it was too weak to be in my tank. So even if that pulled a bit of the grit off, I'd rather be completely safe. Like as I said, this grit is fine, but I could just imagine like Diego getting up there and start digging and it starts mixing in. Yeah, I just didn't want that. Then it was time to add in a hole for the UV lamps wires to enter the tank and make sure things like the thermostat and heat mat could all fit through the holes. It had been a further few days since I did the sealanting, is sealanting a word? I don't know. So I decided to put the tank back in my room, placed it where it originally was and stick down the heat mat and the cables and the thermostat, the thermometer. <laughs> I use electrical tape, it's completely fine and safe, it prevents the mat from slipping, it prevents the gecko from getting under the mat, keeps the cables in place. For example, the thermometer I have, this, the cable's so long so I just stick a lot of it down. Unfortunately though I only had 
bright blue tape, which is slightly annoying, but at least we always know where it is. This also prevents any of the cables getting mixed with the substrate. Now for the substrate, I'm using Earth Mix Arid. I actually did do a review on this, but it was one of my videos that got demonetized, and then I had to send it to be manually reviewed, apparently. It got demonetized again, and I could not question it anymore, so I had to email YouTube and be like, this is a review on dirt. How has this been demonetized? And I think I finally got it back. But the problem is, when something's demonetized that much, it doesn't really get shown very much, so obviously people didn't really see it. And so I get a lot of questions about the substrate I use and whether it's safe or not. So if you haven't seen it or if you are curious, go see that review. Oh, by the way, in this time I had managed to remove the vine from that hide I was on about. I realised that it, the hide itself is completely hollow, so I don't want any feeder insects getting inside, so I used the rest of my expanding foam to just fill that in, and once it was dry it became a planter for my air plant. Now, as for other plants in here, I'm probably not going to put any... For plants to really flourish, you need a grow fly, and since I don't have that or a drainage layer, and I generally suck at keeping succulents alive, I decided not to. I have this air plant, which I can easily remove, show it more sun if it needs to be, um, because obviously it's not getting any in the tank, but this particular air plant has been in the back of my room, where it's fairly dark anyway, and it's been doing fine. So we'll see how this goes. If it does do well, then maybe I can add in a few more air plants but I don't see leopard geckos interact with their plants as much as say a crested gecko so I don't think it's very vital and also this is why I call it a naturalistic tank because it's not like bioactive or completely natural. Anyway, I put holes in those fake rocks that were going to be hides. Now, unfortunately, the drill piece broke when I did this one hole on top. So we're kind of hoping Diego will know that that's a hide. And if not, I will have to try to drill another hole in like I originally planned. And the grey hide next to his main hide will actually be a shedding hide. Uh, there is actually an entrance hole, but it's just around the back. So this is what we started off with. And this is what we have now. So, am I a massive fan of this? Do I think this is amazing? No, not really. <laughs> it's the first time I've used this technique with like expanding foam and fake and real rocks and I really wasn't sure how it turned out and I am my biggest critic, but hopefully Diego likes it. Uh, speaking of Diego, let's introduce him. If you ever notice your gecko's breathing increase or it's moving slower or it's dragging its tail around the place when you've either cleaned it out or given it a new setup. This is completely normal behaviour to see. Your gecko will be wary of new surroundings, especially if they can't smell their own scent. They could potentially be walking in on another gecko, so they are going to be very wary and feel a little more vulnerable and easier to spook. If you do see your gecko dragging their tail, I only really see this in males and I assume they are actually just marking their scent. Now I later did sprinkle like a light sprinkling of Diego's old eco earth around the place just so he felt more comfortable and he could smell himself. But he did seem to settle in really well. The first few days though he did sleep on his on the right of the vivarium because for years that's where his heat mat's been, that's where he's always slept and unfortunately for him I've changed it to the left side but he has now got used to that thankfully. I also found him at night up exploring those ledges. This is a great thing about these ledges. It allows him to have more floor space and it's really optimizing all of that space. One thing I don't like about the gecko tanks sometimes is they can be tall, but of course you don't really use a lot of that space. So he does go up on those ledges. He is nearly a foot long, so getting up and down from them isn't a problem, but you probably won't see him on those ledges when the UV light's on because the closer you are to the light, the stronger the UV is, and it's like at the perfect height when he's on the floor. So there's no way he's going up any higher when that light is on. Now talking of floor space, I also, kind of always feel that these tanks may come across a little like cluttered but we can't forget that all of these hides can technically be classed as elevated floor space and you don't want your gecko just to be walking on one whole substrate so they can walk on these fake rocks and like real rocks in some tanks and so there's a variety of floor space and technically all these rocks you see in this tank he can hide in and I find with leopard geckos if they have a very bare tank and there's a lot of empty space they feel more vulnerable so as I said all of these hides could be elevated floor space but equally they are hides so he can feel nice and secure. 
Anyway, um, Diego is doing well. He ate on his first night in the tank. So, so far, so good. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye.